Hi, welcome to Copenhagen. Thanks for dropping in. Hope everybody is doing well. Today we are having a sneak peek of Melody Lane from Diamond Art Club. So if you have been following Diamond Art Club on Instagram, at Diamond Art Club, you will have seen a preview picture of this diamond painting. And this is what they call a sneak peek. It's a chance for people to have a closer look at a diamond painting. Diamond Art Club posts pictures during the week of new releases that are coming out on Saturday of that week. And it gives people a chance, they look at the pictures and maybe one catches their eye and they think, oh, I quite like that one. Rather than just buying it purely on the picture, this is a chance to actually have a look at the diamond painting. So with Diamond Art Club sneak peeks, you're getting a preview before the diamond painting actually goes on sale. You will be watching this on Friday. It will not be on the website yet. It will be live on Saturday. So today we're going to have a closer look at Melody Lane by Ennis Guerrero. So if you're new to diamond painting or new to Diamond Art Club, this is what you can expect if you order a diamond painting from them. You receive this box, um, which is obviously branded. It doesn't come wrapped up. Um, so you can see Diamond Art Club, do what makes you sparkle. We have diamondartclub.com, which is the website. Then we have at Diamond Art Club on Instagram and we have Diamond Art Club on Facebook. So we have this box, sturdy box, but we also have a box inside the box. So I'll uh, get my sharp knife that I laid somewhere, found it, and uh, we'll open it up. So it used to be just normal cell tape, but now they use this uh, brown tape that has thread through it. So I had to upgrade my blunt scissors to a sharp little craft knife. Makes it a lot easier to open these things. The scissors just couldn't cut it. Pardon the pun. So, as easy as that with a sharp knife. So open up, see what's inside. So we get free air. So I have a little bit of padding just to stop the box moving about inside the box. So we'll put that out of the way. And then we have the actual box. Sometimes you will get the outer box will just be a, a plain brown box. That happens if they happen to run out of stock of the branded boxes. So if you get a plain brown box, don't panic. It's just they've run out of the branded boxes. But when you open it up, you will get a box like this. Um, <clears throat> so very sturdy box. So it's basically double packed. Um, very little chance of it getting damaged. So we have Diamond Art Club, do what makes you sparkle. Further down, we have uh, square diamonds, but you can actually tell from a distance if it's square or round drills because we have the square. If it had been round drills, we would have a pink circle. So very easy to tell from a distance. Then we get down to the thumbnail. So this is uh, the sneak peek of the day, Melody Lane by Ennis Guerrero. And it is square drills, you already saw that. The size is 20 inches by 30 inches, which is 50.8 centimeters by 76 centimeters. And then it just says, all inclusive, see back for contents. So if we turn the box over, we get this little bit here, jaw dropping artwork that you can do at home. No experience required. Have some time to yourself and leave the day's worries behind. Create gorgeous artwork that you can frame in your home. 
makes a great gift for friends, family and loved ones. Then we have how it works, the basics of diamond painting in six steps. So a little uh, thumbnail in each one. Then we have the kit contents, premium velvet tarpaulin canvas, colour coded resin diamonds, magic diamond applicator, comfort grip, multiplacer and tweezers. Two wax pads, craft tray and resealable baggies. Inventory sheet with pre-cut sticker labels. So we have that in three different languages. At the very bottom we have warning, choking hazard, and basically keep it away from small children because they might decide to swallow the drills. So that is it. So now we will have a look inside the box. So the box is sealed in cellophane as you can see so it stops any dust or anything getting inside. Uh, I'll just peel that off. And then uh, we'll have a look inside the box. So open it up, reach inside and the first thing I find is the toolkit. So this is uh, the Diamond Dark Club toolkit. This is what you can expect um, with all Diamond Dark Club kits. Um, on the back it gives you a list of contents. So we have applicator times one, comfort grip times one, heart shaped wax container times one, crafty, craft tray times one, tray stopper times one, Multiplacer times two, cover minder times one, washi tape times one, ziplock baggies and tweezers times one. If this had been round drills, there won't be any tweezers. The tweezers only come with square kits. So open it up and reach inside. See what I find first. A pink pen. Um, <coughs> this isn't a normal pink pen. It is slightly different. It has uh, little pieces of glitter in it. It's sort of semi-transparent. Um, a lot of kits it is basically standard. They come with a pink pen but it's normally solid um, pink. So I think this is the first pink one I've got. The thing about Diamond Dark Club is the pens are totally random um, as in which colour you will receive. I don't think I have a pink one, I do now, but um, I have like red, like a darker, much darker red than this, purple, yellow, blue, green, orange, I'm sure I'm missing some, but um, it just happens to be a pink pen. So we'll take out the tray, maybe, without taking everything else out, just kind of have to do that because everything sits on the tray but I just wanted to talk about the tray. So Diamond Dark Club supply a tray that has a spout or a nozzle, makes it easier to pour the drills into containers and bags but they also have a little stopper and that is if uh, you're the type of person that shakes the tray maybe a bit too aggressively and the drills fall out the front um, you can put the little stopper in and then you don't have to think about it. You shake it, they won't fall out. So that's what that's for. Off the top of my head, Diamond Dark Club are the only company that I've reviewed that have a stopper in their tray. But for me, the main thing is they have straight edges. So when you set the tray down, if you accidentally touch it while you're diamond painting, you pick up your drill, you maybe you're putting the drill down quite close to the tray, your knuckle accidentally on the side of your hand accidentally touches the tray, it'll sit, it won't move. Most other companies, the sides of the tray are angled and when you lean on it or touch it accidentally, the tray will flip. I had to actually pull that to get it to flip over but if they have angled sides um, they will flip over very easily 
which means the drills that you had in your tray are now on the glue on your canvas and you have to use your tweezers to pick them back off. And if you have round drills, you don't actually have tweezers to pick them back off, which makes it even more difficult. So really good idea to, um, they didn't always do it. Originally they had angled like everybody else. They thought about it and thought, hang on a minute, that's a bit of a pain. Why don't we fix it? So they did. And they made the tray a bit wider, so it makes it much more stable. Um, may sound like a small thing, but once your tray has flipped over two or three times, you'll appreciate it. So, very nice tray. I really like that. And dig in the bag. Now we have the pink wax. So Diamond Art Club's pink wax comes in a little heart shaped case, which you opened upside down. So open it up and then you've got, if I can get them to come out without dropping them. There we go. So we've got two hearts of pink wax. Diamond Art Club have always done heart shaped. Most other companies it's a rectangle or a square. Some companies it's a circle. Diamond Art Club, two little hearts and uh, they come in a nice little box or case. Um, there is a reason for this. It keeps any dust or pet hairs or human hairs or anything, crumbs, keeps everything off your wax, keeps it nice and fresh and helps to stop it from drying out. So nice thing to have, a little case with your pink wax. And then we'll go in again, see what I find. We've got the squidgy and Diamond Art Club always match the colour of the pen to the colour of the squidgy. So pink, pink. If it had been blue, blue, orange, orange, green, green, you get the idea. So the squidgy slides over the pen and sometimes they can be pretty tight and I think this one is. Just wonder sometimes if I try from the other end any better, not really. So sometimes it takes a little bit of effort to work the squidgy up, but the idea is once you get it on, it um, increases the diameter of the pen and gives you a sort of spongy surface rather than just hard plastic. So it can make it more comfortable, especially for people who have problems holding thin things, uh, maybe arthritis. Um, problems holding thin things for any length of time so this will thicken the pen a bit and make it more comfortable to hold so as I said sometimes they're a bit tight and it does take a bit of effort to get it on the good thing is if it takes effort to get on it won't fall off or slide down when you're using it so I'm not going to um, try and get it all the way on um, but yeah it's just once you've got it on that's it so next we have washi tape. Oops. So uh, the washi tape comes as standard in the kits. Um, I don't think I've tried any other kit from a company that supplies it standard. Not that I can think of. Maybe one. Um, <clears throat> so. The washi tape, again, is totally random, a bit like the pens, but even more random. Um, there are, I, I've actually never had the same washi tape yet. So they, you don't know what you're going to get until you open the bag, um, the same as with the pen. So this one is a sort of orange background with little flowers on it. Some people use it to decorate around the border of the diamond painting. Other people use it to stop your hand touching the little um, sliver of glue that goes past the edge of the picture. The glue always goes slightly over just to make sure that your drills sit solidly on the glue. So that little strip around the outside c can be irritating if you're working near the edge and you, your hand keeps sticking to the glue. Um, fabric if you wear long sleeves fabric can start to stick to it and it can look start to look pretty grubby so some people put the washi tape around the outside just to cover the glue um, and then peel it off when they're finished 
just so the canvas stays nice and clean. <clears throat> Other people would actually use it to frame the diamond painting if the washi tape you get happens to match I keep dropping it. Um, happens to match the, the picture that you're working on. Um, I got Batman and the washi tape I happened to get was black and gold, which actually matched it. I didn't use it, but I thought, yeah, I can see, um, I could see somebody using it. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so this one is orange with uh, little flowers on it. So that's the washi tape. Now we have a cover minder, which is a macaron. It isn't a macaroon, it's a macaron. Now, again, the cover minders are absolutely random. There are many, many, many different types. Um, <clears throat> I'm just looking over because I've, I've got my uh, cover minders sort of stuck to a stand and I can see this is my fourth macaron and it's a pink one. I think that was, in fact, I'm sure it was purely a fluke. It was a pink pen um, and I got a pink macaron um, because I do have other ones. So I have purple, yellow and orange. So I don't know how many colours there will be of them, but in this case it was a pink one. Um, they can be many, many different things. So I'll just put these back. <clears throat> so for anybody who doesn't know what a cover minder is, if you look at the back of them, it doesn't matter what shape it is, um, it will have what looks like a magnet, but if you slide it, it's actually two magnets. The idea is if you're working on your diamond painting and you fold back the clear sheet it will have a habit of flipping back over again. <coughs> Excuse me. So to stop that happening what you can do is if you lift your canvas up and put your uh, the loose magnet underneath the canvas fold the sheet back and then place your macaron in this case uh, over the top it will stick to the magnet that is underneath the canvas and that holds the clear sheet in place. <clears throat> so that, that is what cover minders are. Um, I think a lot of people just collect them and probably stick them on the fridge. It's just one of these things, it's a bit of a surprise, you never know what you're going to get, you're hoping you're going to get something totally different from the rest. Um, but. I have no idea how many cover minders they have. Um, I would imagine it is a lot. So um, there's a good chance you're going to get something that you've never had before. <clears throat> so that's uh, that's the cover minder, and then we get. Hmm. Okay. We get one multiplacer. Normally there's two. So I don't know if it's maybe fallen out somewhere in the box. Uh, it could have actually because I, when I opened this, um, the bag wasn't sealed. So it might be still inside the box. But normally you get two. Um, this is the larger one. Cover minders. Cover minders. It's because I was looking at that. <coughs> multiplacers are used to pick up more than one drill at a time. If you use your pen, just take that off, you can only place one drill at a time. So you push your pen into the pink wax, spin it around, take it out and you should see a circle. So the wax is then in the pen and that's what picks up the drills from your tray. If you get an area on your diamond painting that is all one colour, you can use what they call a multi-placer. So again, you would push this into your wax and then you would get a row, like a column of pink wax. You shake your drills, get them sitting the right way, get them in line, and then you um, use the pink wax to pick them up. So the multi-placer is in the opposite end. So you've got a single place on one end, multi place on another. You pick up your little row of drills and you place 
however many it is, six or seven, whatever this would be. Um, so it speeds up um, when you've got large areas of the same colour. Normally you get a smaller one as well if the areas aren't quite as big um, to work this size. I think it is probably in the box because as I said this was actually sitting open so I think it's fallen out but we'll find out. I haven't had one missing yet so we'll see. So the last thing I think, yes, the last thing is the baggies. You always get a bag of bags and these are to uh, store your spare drills at the end. When you're finished you will find that you've got extras left. So you can use these bags to um, to keep them. So, And then you can maybe use them in future kits if you've got um, a colour that's missing. Um, if you check your bags, put a little label on it um, with your DMC code. I'll speak about that in a bit. Um, and if you're missing a DMC code, say, I don't know, 810. Um, 810 is a specific colour. And uh, if you're missing some 810, then you look through your little baggies and you've got a label that says 810, you can use those drills in that diamond painting. So they come in handy if you happen to uh, be short. <coughs> Obviously, if you are short, you can always contact Diamond Dark Club, let them know, and they'll post them out. But if you've got some spares, you can save yourself time and just use them. So, I always count them. Diamond Dark Club are normally around 25 bags. So, we'll see what we've got this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think that's the least I've ever had. But it is pretty random. It's just that recently they always seem to be around the 25. So 15 bags this time. And they are resealable. Quite thick, so um, they should last. Uh, they're not very, I mean sometimes you get them, they're really thin and flimsy, but these ones are pretty good. So, 15. So that is it, we've got the baggies, we've got the pink wax, heart shaped. We've got the cover minder, which happens to be a macaron. Uh, pink pen, pink squidgy. One multiplacer, but I've got a funny feeling I'm going to find the other one in the box. And, um washi tape and probably the thing that I like the best is the tray. Straight edges, doesn't flip over as easily, really good idea. So that's the toolkit, just put all of this out of the way and then uh, we can have a look and see what else is in the box. So we can move this. I'm just thinking the cover mind is in here and I took the box. Ah, there was actually something else missing, I forgot. The, the multiplacer is there. I'll put that to the side just now. I forgot it's square drills, so we get tweezers. So these are branded Diamond Art Club. Very good tweezers. They are made of steel, they're not um, the sort of silver cheap tin ones. They're uh, very, very sharp. Some people call them stabby tweezers. They come with a little cap. I would always suggest you put it on when you're not using them. And also keep them well out of reach of uh, children and pets. Um, you don't want any accidents. So the branded uh, tweezers and then this is the small cover minder that we were missing so all that's happened is the box the bag for whatever reason has popped open in transit and uh, these two things have fallen out so that is the complete toolkit now so I'll put them beside the rest and we'll have a look at this so diamond art club 
always provide a little thumbnail which is actually a sticker and it's for people who uh, keep a physical logbook. Some people like to keep a book and you can index it with the uh, thumbnail of the diamond painting. It will give you the name, in this case it's Melody Lane by Ennis Guerrero and it tells you there diamond shape is square size 20 inches by 30 inches or 50.8 centimeters by 76 centimeters so some people will uh, use these things i don't personally but it's nice to have it gives people the option so uh, we'll put that out of the way as well and I'm just checking that nothing else just making sure nothing else was still in the box so now we've got the actual canvas in a sealed bag again the box is sealed then the canvas is sealed so they're really making sure that no dust or anything gets in and can maybe stick to the glue somehow so diamond art club do what makes you sparkle it has a sealed bag as i said so you can just peel it back and check this out so I think I probably always mention it. The Diamond Art Club canvas is definitely the best um, that I've ever tried. Doesn't really sound like much, but if you do get a Diamond Art Club kit, um, when you feel the canvas, it is so different from any other company. It's very soft, sort of velvety, very malleable, pliable. It doesn't crease um, easily or anything. You can let it um, bend over the table because a lot of the kits are big um, and if it hangs off the, over the table it, it won't crease it or anything like that so really really good quality canvas which we will have a better look at a bit later but first let me take a selfie we will uh, look at these pieces of paper so we'll start with this one The drills there. So we get a thank you leaflet, thank you for your purchase, a little bit about Diamond Art Club, then we get what's included in your kit. So again, it mentioned it on the box, but it's just giving you the list again. <clears throat> and then tips and tricks. Um, if you're new to diamond painting, you might find some of these things uh, useful. They mentioned Diamond Art Club release paper. That does not come with the kit. You would need to buy that separately. Um, the checkerboard technique, which I use all the time. Um, it, I find it definitely helps to keep things nice and straight. Um, Pre-cut sticker labels. Talk about them in a minute. Uh, Multiplacer tools. I showed you them. They um, fit in the back of the pen. Um, Colour blocking. Again, that's what you would use the Multiplacer for. And then they mentioned the washi tape as well. And then at the bottom here we get a 10% off your next purchase code. Quite nice. Uh, if we look inside we get a scan code which um, will take us to a video on diamond painting. I would always recommend if you're totally new to diamond painting just thinking about it. Maybe just waiting on a kit coming. You've never done it before. Go on YouTube search diamond painting for beginners diamond painting tips um, anything like that and, and watch some videos that's what i did when i started or before i started and i picked up some really useful information which saved me um i would say quite a bit of potential um problems so Definitely browse and, and just watch and watch people diamond paint and see how they do it and listen to how they, ex how they explain things. Um, and then when you get your kit, you will be ready to go. Then we have another scan code. This is for the VIP Facebook group. Um, they have over 31,000 members now. Every one of those 31,000 members has at least one Diamond Art Club diamond painting. You can only join the group if you have bought a Diamond Art Club diamond painting. Um, very, very good group to join. Uh, you will see 
a lot of pictures of Diamond Art Club kits. You will see works in progress. And um, if you're new again, um, everybody's um, more than willing to help if you've got any questions or, or uh, problems. Um, everybody will, will try and help. <clears throat> After all, it's a hobby that we all love. So um, if we get new members, we always try and help them. Um, then we have step-by-step uh, -step instructions again, just uh, basic instructions on how, on how to diamond paint. And the, the last thing that we've got is the uh, app, Diamond Art Club app. If you download the app and you use it to buy a kit, your, on your first purchase you will get a 20% discount. So that is a nice discount. So definitely worth using that. So that is the booklet. <coughs> and then we have the key, as I call it. Um, some people call it the legend so this is a much bigger thumbnail so here we can see Melody Lane and um, it gives you the artist's name Ennis Guerrero, Guerrero sorry. Um, and then the size and all that stuff then we get a list of the colours, the first column so we have number 1 to number 30, so 30 colours in this diamond painting. These are the symbols that you'll see on the canvas and colour code is the DMC code that I mentioned, again for people who are new. Um, the DMC code is a specific number for a specific shade of a colour. The one that I usually mention is 310, um, which this one doesn't have. But I got caught out with this before. Um, it doesn't have 310. The, the DMC codes are in numerical order. Um, <clears throat> but it actually does have 310 down the bottom here. It says E310. Now I got caught out with this uh, in another unboxing and I found out that E310 is glow in the dark. So it's glow in the dark black. Now you can see there is going to be a lot of glow in the dark in this one. A lot of dark colours. Um, and then we've got Z762. That is a fairy dust. Diamond Art Club actually manufacture their own drills and they've started to uh, experiment with things. And they've come out with glow in the dark drills and they've come out with uh, fairy dust. Fairy dust drills are sparkly. Um, yeah, so um, we'll have a well, we'll have a look at them. But I actually did a video um, having a closer look at fairy dust, so I'll put a link in the description and you can have a look at that. So that's it. That's the key. Nice big thumbnail. You could actually use that as a sticker, I think, <clears throat> because um, your key here is actually pre-cut labels. So rather than having to draw the symbol on your boxes, um, you can just peel these off and stick them on. So a uh, very quick way of numbering and labeling your boxes or your tubs or whatever else you may use. <coughs> Sorry about the frog in my throat. It's just uh, one of these things. It always happens when I decide I'm going to do a video. Um, so that's the key, and we'll put that to the side, and then we'll have a look at the drills. So the drills come in the bag um, with a glue strip along the side, so they open like this, very noisily. Um, put that to the side, and then it goes nice and quiet again. <clears throat> so these are the E310s. So these are the E310s, which are glow in the dark. Now I'm thinking I'm going to do a bit of an experiment. Actually, I've just thought about it. Um, I've got a little torch here that has UV light. The glow-in-the-dark drills are triggered by sunlight or UV light. So 
I'm just going to give this a try here. I don't know how well it's going to work. But if I get the little torch and I shine it, it's probably better doing it this way. Hold this a bit closer. So what I'm going to do, put them down a minute. I want to switch this light off. And I'm going to switch this light off. Now, I don't know if this is going to be dark enough, but I'm just curious. So if I shine the little torch on the drills, just to give them some UV light. Actually, looking at the drills, it looks like I'm shining on the base. I don't think the base will be glowing in the dark. Can you see anything? Not really. I don't know if the bag affects it. I'll try that a bit later in the video. So, we'll put the lights back on. That was just a spur of the moment thought. But I think I'll maybe pull some out in a tray and try again. Anyway, um, the E310s are the glow in the dark black. And then just have a quick skim through. So we have, uh, what was it, 30 colours in this one. So we have uh, a nice pink, a lot of pink in this. And then the glow in the dark black, which you can see we have a lot actually when we count this. Uh, isn't all yeah, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six bags of glow in the dark. So that's a lot. And then we'll go further through. When I'm doing this all I'm looking at is the drills, um sort of tipping the, the bags to see that the drills are nice and loose. And they're not clumping together. I can see we've got some static there. Um, I did a video about that as well. So I'll add a link to that as well. If you have static drills, um, I'll show you how I get rid of it. You can actually see the drills are jumping up the bag. So a bit of static in that bag anyway. I didn't notice it in the rest, but <coughs> it's just one of those things that you get. Um, I've, I've heard from different companies the problem is the resin drills resin drills are the best and um, they are the shiniest they are the best quality nice and flat bases but it can be a problem uh, the static so as i said i did a video and i showed how i get rid of the static so just having a skim through i've got a b's here uh, aurora borealis grey but they've got a special coating on them so uh, they reflect different colours so as I move the bag about I can see green, blue, purple, red, yellow mm, I think that's pink <clears throat> the idea of this is when you walk past the diamond painting obviously the drills aren't moving, you're moving the light hits the drills at different angles so they sparkle different colours which is really cool. So rather than just being grey, um, they sparkle um, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, whatever. So nice effect. So we've got one AB, one fairy dust, and one, I uh, shouldn't say one, but I mean bag. In fact, the, the glow in the dark is many bags. But uh, yeah, so we've got three different types. Rather, uh, four including the standard I suppose but we have uh, yeah, different types of trail and that's pretty much it you can get an idea of the sort of picture of colour um, basically browns blacks, pink and grey 
So it definitely isn't the brightest diamond painting I've done, but it isn't meant to be. So take this out of the way, <coughs> and then we'll have a look at the actual diamond painting finally. So if we start at the top, and then we open it up, we can have a look at Melody Lane. So you can see, I mean, it is pretty big. That looks really cool. Really cool. Just uh, try to hold that up. Now, this is the thing that I've always liked. In fact, I'm going to switch lights off. I normally do that when I get to this point. Um, it just cuts the reflections so you can get a better view of the actual artwork. So the thing that I've always liked about Diamond Art Club is the rendering and that is how closely they can get the diamond painting to look like the original artwork. Now Diamond Art Club only supply their kits in one size because what they do is they hand render. People sit and they basically build the picture, they look at it and they won't um, do a smaller diamond painting if they think they're losing quality so they'll work it to get the best image and then that's the size and I like that a lot of companies will sell you a diamond painting in maybe six different sizes what they don't tell you is there is a huge difference between the smallest size and the largest size there's also quite a big difference in the price um, and you can spend money thinking I'll go for the smaller one or maybe the next one up or the next one up um, and it'll just look as good as the rest and they don't the bigger they are the more detail you get the other thing is because people actually sit and look at this and basically build the picture the quality is much better it isn't just a scanned image they, they don't just take that work scan it let a computer do it and then that's it which most companies do and that's where you lose quality um, the diamond art clubs have always been just really really good um, and this one is uh, no exception I really like the detail on the face the shading is really good um, they've just always been really good at doing that so this is Melody Lane, go back up again, so I'll put it back. So we can see she's got a witch's hat and we have some uh, fall leaves or autumn leaves. We've got a leaf blowing in the wind up here and we've got some uh, pretty dangerous looking thorns around the top of the hat and then the big wide brim and then we've got Melody Lane. Um, yeah, it was when I saw it, I, I looked at it, and I was—I couldn't help thinking, there's more. To, there must be more to this than just the image, because once you look at, start looking at what she's wearing and the symbols, and and what is this choker, leather choker, all about, and the fact she's got a cut in her nose, and just the look in her face—it's there's, there's a story there. So. Um, I thought about it and I thought I think I'll try and contact the, the artist and ask her what is the story um, behind Melody Lane because when I first searched it I found out there was actually a song called Melody Lane and I thought I wonder if this artwork was the inspiration for the song or if the song was the inspiration for the artwork so I contacted um, <clears throat> Ennis and to my surprise she actually replied but I'll talk about that in a bit so before that we'll just have another scroll just to try and let you see the detail in this again we're only looking at the, the canvas and uh, once the drills are on these colours are going to be much much richer 
we're going to have a lot of sparkle and we're going to have the glow in the dark as well and the bees and the fairy dust so it's going to be pretty sparkly um, it's going to be interesting to see what it looks like at night when you switch lights off and it glows but I'll just uh, another quick or slow skim but again I just think the artwork in the face is just really really good just the shading with the skin tones and then as I said we've got all these symbols on our clothes and then we've got another uh, leaf floating there so that is Melody Lane but I think what we'll do is we'll have a closer look at the actual print okay so now we're going to have a closer look at uh, the actual canvas we're going to have a look at the symbols how easy it is to read them is there any faded print misprint double print any problems like that any creases anything so we're just scrolling down and we can see everything looks absolutely fine and we are very close uh, to the canvas but you can see again it's the expression in the eyes um, I, I just think this has been done so well and when I first looked at it it was a combination of the look in her eyes and this leather choker that she's wearing with the rings on it and then the the symbols on the top and I thought there's a story in here somewhere so as I said um, I contacted Ennis and she got back to me the next day and um, I had basically asked her um, if the the song that I heard about um, called Melody Lane was the inspiration for the artwork or if the artwork was the inspiration for the song and I said I can't help feeling there's, there's a story in here um, and as I said to my surprise Ennis actually wrote back and it wasn't just a quick one sentence thing um, she actually took time um, to explain so I think um, I'll do that next. So when I contacted Dennis, I asked her if the artwork Melody Lane was the inspiration for the song or if the song was the inspiration for the artwork. And this is what she said. I don't talk that much about the history behind my pieces because it's very important to me that the person who sees the art makes their own interpretation and in that way it makes it more personal for the observer. But yes, this artwork was in part inspired by the song Melody Lane by Uncle Acid and the Dead Beats, but also by the song Happiness is a Butterfly by Lana Del Rey. Melody Lane was a girl who lived a very toxic and abusive relationship with her ex-boyfriend. The scars and tears represent the pain that she lived, but what is inside her is represented by the symbols on her clothes. Her inner world saved her. After she made her shadows work in therapy, her shadows are her dark clothes. She finally found a way to get out of this toxic cycle. The painting represents just that moment. Her expression is not a sad one, but she is still working on those scars, those tears and her shadows. She moved on to a better place. And that's why when I published her painting, I added the quote of the song, Too Bad She's Gone, Melody Lane. Melody Lane is not based on those songs, but is inspired by them. They kind of got me in the mood to work on her. 
as a person who also had very toxic and tragic relationships, therapy and my artwork helped me as a personal alchemy to heal and tell my history. So I was thinking about doing a little test of the glow in the dark, but after reading Ennis's reply, uh, I thought this was actually a good place to stop. Um, again, when I looked at it, I just thought there's a story. You can just, it's hard to explain. Um, <clears throat> again, it gets us down to the rendering. I think Diamond Art Club have done a fantastic job on this one. You, you can just see something in her eyes in the picture. Um, and then the symbols, that was, when I saw the symbols, I started thinking, what do they mean? What, what is this? Um, so when Ennis replied, as I said, I mean, I thought if I even got a reply, it would just be, oh, thanks for saying that you enjoyed my artwork type thing. But um, she gave me a reply that I just wasn't expecting. She, she sort of opened up a bit. Um, which I think probably gives this more meaning um, because it's related to the artist and then it's put on canvas like the original would be put on canvas um, and then it's been um, converted into a diamond painting and Diamond Art Club have, have done a fantastic job of rendering that artwork and keeping that feeling in the picture um, it's, I don't have anything like this, um, but when I saw it, it's just the expression in her eyes, it's, it's hard to explain, um, but now I sort of have an insight to the background as well, which makes it even more uh, appealing, um, more personal, so uh, yeah, I, I really like it, um, it's... Yeah, it's just, again, it's done so well, but the main thing for me is the facial expression, and in particular, her eyes. Uh, it just looks almost real. I mean, you can see she's thinking. So, yeah, it's it's a really, really nice one. Um, the Again, it's Diamond Art Club. Uh, the, the quality of the drills are the best. Uh, <laughs> there's no getting by that. Um, they manufacture their own drills now, as I said, so they have total control over the, the quality. Um, they are extremely shiny resin drills. Um, just, yeah, I would say they were the best. The canvas as well, um, th this sounds like a a sales pitch or something but um, I don't get paid for this. Um, the canvas as well is is just so good. Um, it's, I haven't yet found another company that can match um, Diamond Art Club's canvas and their canvas has been like this since I got my first one in 2019. It's just always been really good quality. Um, the, the print quality is perfect. Poured glue, no creases or anything, nothing to worry about. Um, you've got the uh, pre-cut labels as well, which personally I don't use, but um, for people who do put labels on their containers, uh, it saves so much time. Just peel them off, stick them on, and you're ready to go. Um, I work by numbers, so my containers are numbered one, two, whatever. Um, so I would have containers marked 1 to 30 and work from that. Uh, that's just the way that I work it. That way I don't have to change the labels on the containers or anything like that. They're just numbered. Um, so that, that's the way that I do it. But I can definitely see the appeal of having pre-printed labels. Uh, it makes life a lot easier and that's not a bad thing. Um, the size, it's a good size uh, but again you need that to get the detail and Diamond Dark Club 
are, are very uh, I don't know what the word is diligent um, they, they will not put out a canvas that doesn't look good um, this one here uh, Foxy Lady is, is relatively small but they've still the rendering is just really really good um, this one only has 30 colours which is less than uh, I mean a lot of them now from Diamond Art Club have in the region of 60 like double the colour but I think just the way they've done this and the sort of atmosphere of the picture uh, it works very very well it is definitely going to be the pinkest diamond painting that I've, I've got um, it wasn't until I looked at the drills and it's like oh everyone's sort of pink and black and brown for the fall but um, yeah it is again I keep looking at it it's, it's a rise I think they've just done it so well but uh, yeah that was uh, Melody Lean and if you've uh, watched this just as it came out this will be Friday uh, Melody Lane will appear in the Diamond Art Club uh, website on Saturday I think a lot of people will be interested in this one but um, yeah I like it a lot so that's it for today thanks for watching um, if you enjoyed the video as always please subscribe hit the notification button if you do that you may catch me live on YouTube live I do random uh, lives don't have set dates and times because I'm fitting it in with the real world and all that stuff so it is very random but if you do drop in please say hi I'm always interested to meet other diamond painters around the world and just get to know them a, a little bit more than just being in um, a group so if you drop in when I'm live please say hello uh, it's always nice to meet new people so uh, the other thing is if you do subscribe hit the notification button you will get a message when a new unboxing unbagging comparison accessory whatever uh, video goes up I still have quite a few things that I have to uh, to record yet so there will be uh, new videos coming up there may even be some sneak peeks you never know so that's it for today thanks for watching and in the meantime take care be safe and wash your hands